Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to be uh, brief this morning, as we've been ins instructed to be. But just a brief introduction, as, as uh, uh, Peter already mentioned. Uh, I'm a professor at, at uh, Emerson College, which is a local uh, college here in Boston. And I run a, a research lab there called the Engagement Game Lab, where we work on games and social media uh, for um, to enhance, create, um, experiment with civic engagement, let's say. So I want to talk about specifically the role of games uh, in, in, the, uh, in a process of designing a civic engagement process. Um, and, uh, and there are a couple projects that I'll just briefly talk about that, that we've done at our lab in the last couple years. One is called uh, Participatory Chinatown. Let me just give you a brief description of Participatory Chinatown and we'll move on. This was a, a game, uh, it was a 3D game, a multiplayer game designed to, um, to be played within a community meeting in, the, in China, the Chinatown neighborhood here in Boston. And, and what we did with this game was we, we, we uh, everybody had a character and they were on a mission. Um, and they had to either find a job, a place to live, or a place to socialize. They interacted with people both in the environment and outside. Um, uh, or rather, I should say, in the virtual environment and people sitting next to them because they were sharing the virtual environment with those people sitting next to them. And we ended up designing or choreographing a meeting that was two hours long that had people both in and out of the virtual space um, looking at the places that they know very well in Chinatown and then co-designing um, the, the uh, spaces that could possibly exist in Chinatown. And it was all based on, they, they had to rank values. This, this is going to be a little confusing. You can read more about this, so, so I don't have a lot of time to talk about it. But they could, they could rank values, and they had to deliberate with each other. And then to win the game, you, got, um, you, you, would, you would choose what was best for your character, and then you, were, and then you found out what you, what you got, what your character got. And people had to speak as their character. So we did a lot of experimentation with role play um, and, um, and sort of transforming the community meeting into, a, um, again, sort of a, a collective game experience, but then also tying it into debriefing, which um, in, in gameplay and, and games for learning, the learning happens not necessarily in the act of playing the game, but in the act of debriefing. And so tying that into the, to the process um, made, made good sense. Um, a project I, I'm, I'm spending most of my time on now is a project called Community Planet, which is a game platform um, that can be used in, um, that is similar in orientation, but um, it, in that it, it's still tied into a face-to-face -face meeting in some regard. Um, but now it's a platform, so it could be used in any context. And I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how it's been used. Well, actually, um, let me give you a brief introduction. I'm already 30% done with my talk. A brief introduction <laughs> um, that, uh, that it goes something like this. It's a mission-based game, meaning that um, it, it, is, it, it starts at a particular time and ends at a particular time. Unlike participatory Chinatown, it could last weeks. Um, and we've done it where it's lasted five weeks. We just finished a game in Detroit that I'm going to show you a bit about that was three weeks. Um, the, people go on missions simultaneously, so a mission starts and it ends. And the mission might be, might be housing, it might be um, free time, uh, it might be um, it, you know, uh, in, environmental justice, depending on the context. Um, the mission gets defined. Um, and then within the mission, there are challenges. So people do challenges. They answer questions. They answer questions for themselves and for characters. Um, and, and, they, uh, they're, they're just, and they're asked to collaborate in some way. And then through this process, they could visualize where they are in relation to the community. And then it all culminates in what we call a game finale meeting, where people, we ask people to come together into a physical space um, where they can debrief. So again, sort of tying that into the, um, the, the overall strategy. Um, we just finished a game in Detroit that was part of the Detroit master planning process. We partnered with an organization called Detroit Works Project. Some of you may know of them. Um, and uh, and we, the, the game was, again, three weeks long. We had three missions. We had 1,000 players. And we had over 8,600 comments um, over the course of three weeks um, in, in this system. And then we got together at the end where about 120 people came together at the Detroit Public Library. Um, and the first thing that we did was show them um, this, this quick video that was a, a kind of overview of what happened during the game.
So uh, before I get into this, I just want to say a little bit about some of the statistics that were interesting that maybe uh, we could talk about at some point, is that um, we had an incredible amount of young people playing this game. And we had um, under, uh, 47% of the users were under 22 years old. And, and that, was a, that was a pretty nice statistic in the sense that we, we had, and I'll talk more about that in, in a bit, but I just want to throw that out there of the, the amount of uh, young people we had um, engaged in this. Um, I want to talk about uh, um, one, one of the things that's interesting about this and, and that we're trying to um, learn from this process is the idea of episodic uh, engagement. And, um, and, and we treat the game as, really? Um, we treat the game as a, um, as interactive storytelling. It's always open-ended. Um, and the, the idea is that we're inviting people in to tell the story based on, on these missions. The missions are, are episodes. Um, it's important in the sense to provide a start and end date. One of the reasons why I think this game works as opposed to simply um, having a, a, a forum, an online forum, is that there's structure and there's story built around what people are, are talking about. And they understand that they're investing their time um, in something that's going to end. And I think that's a really important part of, of making something like this work. It's all tying it into narrative. Um, it's actually building story, character, and suspense um, in, the, in the process of, of getting, a game, um, getting a game going in a city. Uh, I'm not going to show this, but we had videos. I'll just show a tiny second of it. We had videos um, that, that introduced each mission. And, the, and people would sort of talk about what the issues were. And so that's, um, and I, won't, I won't show that for lack of time. But I just want to say a few words about fun and why fun is serious in this regard. Um, as I said before, missions provide structure and story to interaction, and missions themselves can be fun, again, being sort of put into and inserted within a story. Um, competition turned out to be a great onboarding technique uh, in that, in that uh, the idea of winning the game was actually really important for a lot of people to get going, but sometimes as soon as they found out there were super users and they were 3,000 points behind, uh, competition no longer mattered, um, but, they, but many people kept playing regardless. So competition was an onboarding uh, technique, but not necessarily the thing that kept people going. And then finally, and I won't say much about this at this point, but learning is reinforced through the game rules. So giving people a chance to fail, um, fail often and cheaply. Giving people a, a, a chance to, um, a, a challenge. So it's not just say what you want in any format you want, but you have to do this because it's part of the rules. Um, that was actually a really important part uh, for interaction, especially for young people. Um, and then intergenerational collaboration was another important part of this. Um, it was a, uh, establishing a space for both youth and adults. Um, and different modes of expertise were brought into the gameplay. So in some cases, the youth often were, were felt more comfortable within the game space, whereas the adults sometimes felt more comfortable with the content that was being discussed. And that was an interesting collaboration. One of the things that's really important is that each had a different perceived public. Um, and this is a key point that I want to get across in my one minute left, is that each had a different perceived public and that the youth had an understanding of who the public was and it was often each other. So they felt that they were playing for each other. However, that said, they, they knew their immediate public was each other, but knowing that there were adults that were on the system was very important for them because it, 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 it was part of their performance. Likewise, many of the adults that we talked to said that it was really important for them to know that youth were on the system, even though they weren't interacting necessarily with the youth, they actually, many reported to us that they were performing for the youth. And we had some people say that I had to actually make sure my grammar was, was, was pretty good. And I, um, because they were performing for the youth. And that was a really important part of that, of that dynamic that we created. In any kind of game design or any kind of software design, it's very difficult to, des to design for the ages of 14 to 70. Um, and I think we lose something in doing that, but I actually think we gain something in that as well. And that's the, the kind of collaborative spaces that we were able to set up. And I think uh, I'm out of time. Thank you very much.